Well, what do you know? It actually is pronounced Lao. I'm guessing that it was French influenced, maybe? I'm just calling that right off the bat. So, what's going on, Wolfpack? My name is Denaric Wolf. And welcome to some more Bosnian Reacts 2 Jargon for now. Lao, apparently that's actually how you read it. I already learned something here. Also, the uh, the sun is like shining right under me. It's like right on my uh, nether, re <laughs> nether region. And let's check this out. When I put my hands on, the, on my uh, nether region, look at that. That guy's like a mirror. That, that is like, look at that. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I'm <laughs> having too much fun with myself. Anyway, the the video, uh, Laos or Lao Lao. Sorry, Lao. Lao. It's pronounced Lao, not Laos. Lao. Cool. Okay. Okay. Now we can allow this episode to begin properly. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just, I'm so used to getting punched or hit or whatever whenever that happens. Just, I'm, I guess, I guess I'm off the hook. <laughs> to your right. Oh, he's late. Sorry I'm late. Traffic was ridiculous out there. Oh. Yeah, you're okay. sweating. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. All right. Ooh. Okay, that, that would probably knock you out considering he's pretty tall and it's pretty buff. <laughs> Hey everybody, I'm your host Barbs. Today we cover one of the least understood Asian countries on the planet, Lao. I you know Vietnam you. and Thailand I understand get all you, the attention, but across the Mekong, you'll find yourself in a unique place of rustic traditions driven by history, spirits, bombshells, and spice. Let's begin. I love the Mekong because it's a large navigable river. If I could describe Lao's location in two words, I'd probably say beautifully unfortunate. First of all, Lao is landlocked in Southeast Asia, bordered by all the other mainland peninsular Indochina nations, as well as China to the north. The country is divided into 17 Much more powerful and neighbors. Peng Nakhon, which includes the capital Vientiane or Vientiane. I've heard Lao people pronounce it both ways. I don't know exactly which one is correct. I'm more inclined to say Vientiane though because I don't trust that T, but eh, whatever. Oh, and I the shape of the Chien. country looks like a palm tree. Anyway, the largest cities oh, in the capital are Pakse in the south and Savannah Ket a little further north. And the busiest and only international airports are Vientiane's two twins, Watai International and the smaller Luang Prabang International, as well as Pakse International in the south. Otherwise, Lao doesn't really looks have any border disputes or territorial anomalies except for Good. maybe the King's Romans Casino, right at the tri-point border with Thailand and Myanmar. This place is located on what is known as the Golden Triangle Zone, a controversial area in which most of Asia's opium is grown and distributed, mostly headed to China. China. The casino <laughs> lies right at the heart yeah. of the triangle and is kind of like China a knows what it's like. enclave leased out to China for 99 years since 2007. It's always 99 it's the years. Chinese army stationed there. It's kind of like a lawless free zone where controversial practices like exotic animal breeding and harvesting can happen. Look, China, we know. It's not a secret. Dude, this is like the second consecutive episode where you criticize China. I mean, do you have something against them or what's going on there? I mean, you want to too powerful. Them? No, I don't. It's just they kind of have a lot of controversial undertones when it comes to the research. When I write these scripts, like what research? Well, for one, the actual subscribers that are from these countries that have emailed us at geographyradar.gmail.com that have mentioned these things. So I kind of have to take the info that they give and analyze it. <laughs> Life. Okay, well, we don't want this channel <laughs> to seem like it's moving towards some kind of agenda. Oh, trust me, I'm about to throw my own country under the bus in about three, two, one. One thing you have to understand is that in Lao, bombshells are everywhere, and they came mostly from the USA during the Vietnam War. Even yeah, though yeah, Lao yeah. was theoretically neutral, as a tactic, the US sought to destroy the Trong Song supply routes or the Ho Chi Minh Trail that passed through Lao. With minimal warnings to the people before starting, they dropped 260 million tons of bombs, making Lao the most bombed country per capita in history. About a third of the bombs Dude, did not explode. So to this day, there's still a potential danger in certain areas, and the entire country is littered with metallic shells. They even yeah, and, oh, oh yeah. Also, same with Bosnia. We actually like uh, used to N not not that much anymore, but we used to actually like collect mines left from the uh, war. But there's a lot of de de mining going along, especially in recently in in the Sarajevo area. We're actually uh, de mining everything, and uh, they're yeah. It's becoming mine free, but it's, it's assumed that in like 90 years only Bosnia will become fully mine free because even in Germany, they're like find, finding mines from World War II. So th that's one thing. Second of all, uh, the Vietnamese to fight the Americans actually dug a lot of tunnels, tunnel networks that added with the um, very wet weather and the, the uh, jungle terrain made it very difficult for the Americans to um, actually fight in the jungle terrain. And we all know what happened. The Vietnamese technically beat the Americans, <laughs> so yeah, that's what, what that. So Vietnam actually kind of proves that America might rule the seas, definitely rules the uh, air, it rules space, it rules cyberspace, but the Americans do not rule the land. So that's oh, that was like super poetic. I can't believe I I gotta write that down, <laughs> but I'll do it later. But uh, anyway, geography now Laos.
I'm doing that now. <laughs> made their own little economy of recycled shell casings and war memorabilia, such as the fuel tank boats of Tabak and bullet shell necklaces like this one that was sent to me from geographer Nicole, who lived in Lao. Thanks, Nicole. Speaking of which, some places of interest might include. Sounds like a very American Jars, name. The Shen Khan Buddha Park, the Golden Stupa of Patat Duang, the Lao gold? National Museum, Tom Sakurin Saba Nakuha Cave Temple, Creators Restaurant, surrounded by bomb fragments, the Royal Palace of Luang Prabang, the ancient Hindu temples of Vat Po, Patushai War Memorial, Zhao Anuvang, and so many wild. Wats and temples like Wat Dane Sung in the jungle, Wat Si Saket, Wat Xian Tong, and Wat Mai Suwana Puma. Wat Suwana Puma. Wat. Look, I'm not gonna do the Cambodia episode thing again. All right, well that just about covers it. Let's venture into the jungles now, shall we? America's you know what I love about Southeast Asia? The <laughs> they got PTSD the from it. <laughs> the immeasurable varieties of fruit and vegetables that I've never even heard of. The downside, the humidity. Lao is just like you'd expect. I know what you mean, man. The jungle zone of the Annamite Mountain Range to the southeast of Asia, fed by the mighty Mekong River, the longest in the country. The tallest peak, Phuket, lies in the central part of the country nearby Vientiane <laughs> and is actually restricted to climb due to the high number of unexploded bombs that still lay at the area. Yeah, we're back on the bomb thing. It's like a reoccurring theme here in Lao. Lao is a nation of very notable waterfalls like the Quan Si and Kone Pa Feng, as well as the caves like Pak U and Kong Lo. Yeah, I know, Southeast Asian languages aren't really my forte. Animals are abundant, the national animal being the Asian elephant. Here you can find way too many species of animals like monkeys, sun bears, tigers, monitor lizards, marbled cats, even a few Javan rhinoceri. Ugh, the physical geography part is always like the most boring. But it's not in Java. room for witty comments or skits. I feel like you guys are getting bored. Ken, get over here, do something interesting. <laughs> Okay, I get it, you're talented, okay, that's good. That's nice. One of the weirdest things, though, would probably be the Naga fireballs, a strange natural phenomena that supposedly occurs on the Mekong River in which strange fireballs arise from the water. <laughs> Scientists say if... Okay, I was about to say something, but he's getting right into it. So it's probably just, uh, yeah, swamp gas. It can actually, you know, methane can actually bubble up to the surface and uh, ignite, and it comes out as... They're also called will-o'-wisps. That's what, uh, yeah, that's what those are, will-o'-wisps. If it is real, it might be caused by phosphine gases admitted by bacteria that combust. But so far, nobody's completely sure as to how it happens. Either way, it's fun, and people gather around to watch it. But yeah, can you imagine just crossing the river during a fireball show? <laughs> Yeah, that was the only skit I could write for this segment. Food! Over 80% of the population works in agriculture, and Lao food is quite delicious, similar to other regions around them, but noticeably spicy. You have things like papaya salad, or tamak huang, the national dish, la, bamboo shoot soup, mok, sour sausage, and kao lam, which is sticky rice made in a bamboo pipe. Oh, and they have this rice whiskey thing called lao lao. That stuff is weird. Like, sometimes they ferment it with snakes. Okay, so I'm part Asian, so I can say this. Asians, why do we do that? Why do we ferment whole animals in our drinks? Oh, What's God, it's giant Power, stamina, dude, it's a rotting corpse extracting decomposed carcinogens. Stop doing it! But you know, uh, that's none of my business. Every so often though, you might find a baguette or croissant on the menu in many restaurants. The reason why has a little something to do with something called the 19th century, which we will explain in. Now, Lao is funny because it's like an alternate universe Thailand that got thrashed around in a completely different... I thought it was similar to Vietnam. First of all, the country is made up of about 8 million Other people than... and has 47 recognized it, ethnic groups million. divided into 160 subgroups and tribes. It was of like 90 groups, million ethnic Lao Vietnamese. people make up the majority at a little over half of the population. Next are the hill tribes of the Khmu, the Hmong, and the rest are numerous other tribes as well as an incredibly small community of Europeans, mostly French in origin. They also use the Lao Kip as their currency, but also accept Thai baht and US dollars. They use the Type-C outlet, and they drive on the right side of the road, which makes things interesting when their cousins in Thailand visit. And remember, not everyone <laughs> in Lao is Lao. The tribal people like the Hmong and the Mien speak their own languages, virtually unintelligible to the Lao language. And this is why there's a distinction between the terms Lao and Laotian. Lao is ethnically Lao, whereas Laotian is just someone from Lao, but might not necessarily identify as ethnically Lao. Laotian, Lao. that's uh, like that French for, you know, the ocean. Or Azeri versus Azerbaijani. No, it isn't. Get the picture. So anyway, ethnic Lao people, no shocker, speak Lao. I love how simple this word is. It's like an adjective, pronoun, and noun all in one. Lao. Lao is a language that is almost completely intelligible to Thai, although Thai people might have a little bit more difficulty understanding Lao. Even their alphabets are similar, based off the same ancient Brahmic source. However, interestingly enough, because of the former French colonial days, I heard that actually that kind of uh, written text is actually the hardest to learn out of any text in the world, like even more difficult than Chinese. I don't, I don't, I don't really find that believable, but uh, yeah. Or was it like specifically tongue? It looks like a, the text that's like very, you know, put together. I don't know what you would call that text, but everybody says like these languages are like the hardest to learn in the world. 
like the Southeast Asian languages and uh, taking a look at those languages, I can somewhat agree with that. Days, Lao is actually part of La Francophonie, the second largest in Southeast Asia and possibly the largest French-speaking population per capita in the area. More than Vietnam or Cambodia as over a third of the students study French in school. And they actually use it sometimes in business and tourism. Ah, oui. ne lâche pas mon petit chou. Ensemble, nous pouvons contrôler le monde. No, but seriously, no. Norman Lewis <laughs> once interviewed a French officer who was quoted for saying, France did nothing for Lao. I say this proudly. We preserved it through our neglect. Faith-wise, Lao is interesting because about half of the population considers themselves kind of Buddhist to varying degrees. However, traditionally, prior to the spread of Buddhism, Lao was actually heavily animist. And to this day, the remaining half... Oh, just a fun fact, that of all the major religions in the world, uh, during a survey, like, uh, they were surveying uh, what certain religious people know about other people's religions. So, like, example, what do Muslims know about Christianity and Buddhism and Hinduism and so forth? Uh, funnily enough, uh, the, the group that knew the most about other people's languages is actually atheists. <laughs> yeah, atheists. Ironic, huh? And then, um, then it was uh, Ju uh, Judaists and uh, I believe Mormons. And then you had like Christians and, and Muslims. And the last of all the, all, all the religious groups is the Buddhists. That's right. The Buddhists know the least about other people's religions. Just a fun fact I wanted to add. Uh, add into the video <laughs> still practices traditional spirit worship especially the hill tribes which has rituals that have synchronized into mainstream lao buddhism for example most people even buddhists still believe in the 32 guardian kwan spirits that balance life according to the belief sickness can be caused if one of the spirits strays away so they tie cotton strings around their wrists to keep them around lao also celebrates a different new year for the beginning of the monsoon season in april called songkran prior to 1975 lao was under a kingdom until the communist party came in and deposed them there's actually a living descendant of the last king this guy who lives in exile in Paris. Today, Lao is under a one-party socialist back? republic, the Lao oh, People's Revolutionary <laughs> Party that supposedly espouses Marxism and Leninism until 2012 when Obama was like, So, you visited our country, saw the cool stuff, gave you the meat, dumplings, and papaya salad. Not what bad. do you think, Obama? Eh, I guess you're not that communist-y. Let's open up trade deals. Sweet, I'll get the paperwork. Wait, you thought just because Noah was black, I was going to make him play Obama? Okay, here at GN, we are colorblind. Plus, you know, we'd probably get some complaints from the Diversity Commission. Nah, anyway, fine. speaking of government, history. In the quickest way I can put it, here's how Lao went down. Ancient agricultural societies, the Lao Bronze Age, Thai tribes move in, probably from the areas of South China. This guy comes in, he makes Buddhism the state religion, Fang three kingdoms, num. period. The Sounds kingdom cool. of Lan Shang comes in. By the way, the name means millions of elephants with white parasols. Fights with the Burmese, this guy gets the throne, <laughs> Golden Age begins, the kingdom collapses to the Siamese, the Chinese try to attack, but France was like, nope. They agreed to become a French protectorate. The French kind of leave them alone and don't really care because they just want to bother the Thailand. Will be back. World War II, the Thai, China's Chinese, Japanese back. all try to grab at them. They break free and declare independence, but France was like, ha ha, JK, you're still mine. The Lao was like, mm-mm, and then France gives them autonomy, and finally, 1953, independence. The monarchy is deposed and exiled. The Communist Party takes over. Tons of Lao leave the country, especially the Hill Tribe minorities, like the Hmong. The economy and population steadily increased but not substantially and here we are today speaking of which outside of asia the u.s has the largest Hmong community in the world taking in refugees since the 1970s with more Hmong people than there are in lao the largest concentrations being in minnesota and wisconsin so much that they even have public signs written in the Hmong language if you want to learn more about Hmong people just watch the movie grand torino with clint eastwood i like the barbershop scene anyway some famous people from lao or of lao descent might include people like vang pao ken lo bo mum chloe dao chumali sayasone jerry yang kesone tom viane <laughs> Prince was that a, like a stack of money? Hang on. I thought that was a stack of money. Viane, Prince Supanavong, Sisavang Matan, Pao, Ken Lo, Womum, Chloe Dao, Chumali, Sayasone, Gary Yang. Oh, yeah, it is just. But he's like, he's like a world champion uh, poker player, and he got all that money. I don't know. World Series of Poker. It literally says it right there. Generic wolf. Good job, me. Sisone Pomviane, Prince Supanavong, Sisavang Matana, Sisavang Vong, Suvana Puma, and Tongsing Tamavong. So many other things we could have talked about, like how the national sports. I like the poker Tra, guy. which is incredibly difficult to play, and Mui Lao, which is like Mui Thai but a little bit crazier. You have the monks with the morning alms, the traditional hill tribe. I have a feeling they, they might cool. kick Bamboo my ass. Bamboo mouth organs are like the most popular instrument. Home theater looks cool. Animist shrines and all those taboo rituals are found all over. Yes, there are. Some controversies with persecution against certain people groups, but we really don't have time to get into that. Ooh, are you sidestepping it because you're avoiding a potential argument that could be discussed? I literally just talked about the bombings of the Vietnam War. Trust me, we literally just don't have time to get into it. Oh, and do not touch someone on the top of the head. It's considered sacred. You know what else is sacred? Friendship. Okay, time to move on to our last segment. Was that sarcasm? <laughs> 
Lao is interesting because technically it's one of the last remaining communist countries in the world, but they operate different from what you would typically assume a communist country acts like. Despite the colonial past, they still get along pretty well with France, since France didn't really do too much, and they kind of left them alone during the French Indochina years. The French left marks on architecture and food, and today they make up the largest EU tourist group. Lao kind of takes political nice cues house. from Vietnam. However, recently Lao has been shying away from dependence and has been looking to outside investors when Vietnam isn't looking. Surprisingly, Lao is one of the 37 states that recognizes the Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic. They have diplomatic relations and even a non-resident embassy hosted in India. When it comes to their best friends, however, most Lao people I've talked to have said Thailand and believe it or not, the Philippines, kind of. The Philippines sent doctors and volunteers during war times and the heads of state have <laughs> repeatedly didn't get visited the, each other over the past the cross years. Wrong this Filipinos time. are known <laughs> for being the English teachers to Lao people and they hold the most teaching positions in the country. Thailand not only gives them access to the sea and is their biggest trading partner, but is also their big brother that understands them the best culturally. Most Lao people watch Thai TV Cute. shows and movies on a regular basis basis and are fairly familiar with their brother's thai culture, are good, even though, though most Thai people probably couldn't say the On same about Lao, example, but still they generally out. love each other. In conclusion, what do you get when you mix communism with a splash of Buddhism mixed with some French buildings and 32 guardian spirits? You get Lao. China? Stay no, tuned! Oh, okay. Latvia is coming up next. Cool, Latvia. People have been uh, looking, uh, uh, suggesting that one for a long time now. By the way, for those who don't know already, I'm going alphabetically, if you haven't noticed by now. There's still people asking me for countries alphabetically okay <laughs> now that we're done with that let's uh, move on jarg for now laos fry flag, flag friday, friday. Yeah. hope you like the lao <laughs> episode my name is philip defranco and let's just jump into i'm just kidding <laughs> I've been watching too much Philip DeFranco. He's cool. I like My him. name is right, Jack so before Septicai. Before I jump into that intro slide, you know the deal. I gotta fix up the small mistakes from the episode. Number one, it is still kind of acceptable if you pronounce the country's name Laos. Oh, However, that's kind of like the standard English pronunciation. Almost every single Lao person I personally talked to has said that they call it Lao, and a lot of other countries call it Lao as well. And the only reason why it's written with an S is because that's kind of how the French wrote the name Lao. There's no S ending letters in the Lao language. So taking all that into consideration, that's why I call the country Lao. Also, I may have kind of embellished the relationship that they have with France a little bit. In the episode, I kind of made it seem like they didn't really acknowledge Lao that much and they kind of left them alone. For what it's worth, there was some anti-French sentiments going on, but it wasn't as crazy or prevalent as it was in the other countries. I think there are a few other small things here and there, but overall, I think those are the biggest ones. All right, now we can go into the intro slide. So without further ado... <laughs> Ah, Lao. I feel like the only main, like, exposure that they've had on mainstream media is Khan from King of the Hill. Lao's interesting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> kind of like Thailand's stressed out little... I haven't seen that... A uh, completely different way of running things. Cartoon like in a flag. while now. The flag of Lao has three horizontal stripes, two red ones, it's one on the top and bottom, right. and a larger blue one in the middle, with a single white disc in the center. The white disc symbolizes the unity of the Lao people and desired unification with the Lao minorities like the Isan people in northern Thailand. In addition, it has also been said to represent the full moon on the mighty Mekong River, which is what the blue stands for, the Mekong being the largest and most important river of the country. And finally, the red stands for the Lao and Isan people group that and? live on opposite sides of the Mekong River, hence why it's made that way on the flag. It's pretty cool, huh? But yeah. it also stands for... There we go. What are those supposed to be? Once again, you guys know a lot of bombs. Ken for making that animation. <laughs> Follow him on Instagram. Congratulations, Ken. You've survived another week. Hey, Ken, I got a job for you. <laughs> In appreciation, I will give you one bathroom break the next time we film Geography Now on set. It should also be noted that this flag was... Hey, Ken, I won't, I won't treat you like shit if you work for me. <laughs> kingdom. That's right. As mentioned in the episode, Lao used to be ruled under a monarchy until it was deposed by the Patet Lao Communist Party back in 1975. Prior to this, though, every flag variant of Lao from the 18th century on incorporated some kind of triple-headed white elephant under a white parasol image, which is depicted that way because that's what the first United Kingdom in 1354 was called, Lan Shang Hom Kao, which means millions of elephants and white parasols. Interesting name, but yeah, they stuck with it. Keep in mind there was also the Three Kingdoms period, that's kind of what Yen Qian and those countries are did their own full thing of until the French came in and, and did elephants. this. And from there, we get the flag that we have today. And finally, we get to the emblem of Lao. Okay, As that's you know, cool. Lao is one of the last remaining communist-ish kind of countries in the world. And just like the last Flag Friday episode we did with Kyrgyzstan, you can totally 
clearly see the residual communist-ish imagery in the emblem. The image contains stalks of rice on the sides with the national iconic landmark, the golden stupa of Patat. I'm going to get a chisel and dam uh, on the Nam Nung hammer reservoir. and give you some the of that street gold. next to a forest and paddy field as a half gear wheel is situated over a red ribbon with the national mottos. On the left side, it says peace, independence, and democracy. On the right side, it says unity and prosperity. And at the bottom, the central ribbon reads Lao People's Democratic Republic. Prior to that emblem, Democratic. they used this emblem for almost three decades, which instead of the pagoda in the center, they used a hammer and sickle with a star on top. And of course, prior to that, they used the old monarchy emblem, which of course had the elephants and the parasols. So basically, Lao went from a deep-rooted monarchical system to a communist-driven ideology, but they still respected where they came from and didn't see the need to toss out history. All right, with all that being done and said, you know what time it is? It's the end of the video. As always, thank you all for watching. We're going to continue with, I already forgot the next nation. That's, oh, Latvia. We're going to continue with Latvia back to Europe again. Yeah, a place that I'm more familiar with. So until then, take care.